Welcome back to the Neuroscience Meets Social and Emotional Learning Podcast, episode number 108. With Kelly Roman, the co-founder and CEO of Fisher Wallace Laboratories, an FDA regulated manufacturer of wearable medical devices for the treatment of insomnia, anxiety and depression, as well as wellness devices for sleep and stress management. Fisher Wallace has over 70,000 patients and 10,000 subscribers using their devices and has continued to run three sizable clinical trials during the pandemic, investigating how neural stimulation is a strong contender as a treatment for anxiety and depression compared to drug use. Welcome to the Neuroscience Meet Social and Emotional Learning Podcast. My name is Andrea Samadhi, and if you're new here, I'm a former educator who created this podcast to bring the most current neuroscience research, along with high-performing experts who've risen to the top of their field, with specific strategies or ideas that you can implement immediately to take your results to the next level. I can't tell you how excited I am to speak with Kelly Roman today, as we've been on the topic of mental health and well-being on this podcast for the past few months, because this is an area that most people are interested in these days. There is a serious need here. When I was covering the most important brain health strategies after watching the Alzheimer's or the Science of Prevention documentary last year, it became clear that sleep was one of the top five health staples that we should all be aware of. So I covered this last December with a review of the top five health staples where getting a good quality sleep was a staple that's shown as an Alzheimer's prevention strategy. When I was first introduced to Kelly Roman and saw the company he co-founded, Fisher Wallace Laboratories, and they've created wearable devices to help improve sleep while at the same time treating anxiety and depression, I wanted to learn more. If you take one look at their website, you can see their appearance on the TV show, The Doctors, where a patient shares that she's just been wearing the device for a week and she's already sleeping better. The more I began to research this company and their wearable devices, the more excited I became. I started to think up questions that I would ask our guest and wondered if these devices are helping people to improve sleep and reduce anxiety and depression, what else could they possibly do? Could a wearable device help to improve someone's mood and consequently help someone who struggles with addiction? Can these devices improve heart rate variability, which is the measure of your automatic nervous system that's widely considered one of the best objective metrics for physical fitness and determining your body's readiness to perform? My questions could go on. So let's see what Kelly Roman, the co-founder of Fisher Wallace Laboratories, has to say. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I've got to say that my mind was going 100 miles an hour when I was creating your questions. So an FDA regulated manufacturer of wearable medical devices for the treatment of insomnia, anxiety, and depression, also wellness devices for sleep and stress management. We can go in so many different directions here, but I've got to start with sleep. Could we start there with that? So we've created a clear case on this podcast over the past six months of the importance of getting a good night's sleep as one of the top five health staples that we should all be aware of. Can you explain what you're focused on at Fisher Wallace with wearable home use versus other forms like electroconvulsive therapy or transcranial magnetic stimulation? So how do your devices work and how does this improve someone's sleep? Sure. So. Um... Thanks for having me. First of all, really appreciate being here. Um, so just to start off with a comparison, I guess, uh, you know, a lot of people are probably familiar with electroshock therapy from the movies and and Jack Nicholson and, and when who flew over his cuckoo's nest. And um, that unfortunately did, a, did a, a great movie, but a great disservice to what, what, you know, electroconvulsive therapy actually is. So, you know, that's, that's actually a, a procedure that's performed when uh, a patient is under anesthesia. So there's no biting down on anything while they're getting shocked. And, um, and it's, it's extremely effective uh, uh, for, for, for um, preventing suicides, it, it's been shown. So, 
uh, that is often turned to uh, as a last step um, and, and a life-saving step. Um, now that delivers a much, much higher uh, amount of electricity than wearable, obviously. And, and it is designed to uh, induce a seizure, uh, but you are under anesthesia um, during it. But it uses alternating current, uh, which means that the, the polarity of uh, the, the electrodes um, is alternating and not fixed. And that is what we use as a wearable. So there is a similarity there with ECT. Uh, the other huge difference is the dosage, the electrical dosage is, is much less with ours. Um, and, and as a result, we're, we're really designing a device to be used on a daily basis and not just a, you know, a single treatment session like, like ECT. Also, people do get multiple sessions of ECT, but certainly not on a daily basis. Um, and so you can kind of think of it a little bit in, in, in terms of the, the type of current is similar. Um, now, ECT is not indicated to treat insomnia and neither is TMS. TMS is a, a, a kind, of, kind of a magnetic version of, of, of ECT. It's not um, designed to induce a seizure. You don't go under anesthesia, but you do go into a clinic for TMS for transcranial magnetic stimulation and they use high powered magnets to create an electrical field in your brain. Um, and again, what we're doing is, is a, a wearable form of, of brain stimulation. And, and so the, the key there uh, is, is to find the right frequency package um, for us. We, the inventors, um, which, which my partnership and I uh, acquired the, the patents from, uh, they, they invented this device um, using three frequencies, uh, uh, a carrier frequency of 15,000 Hertz for the, uh, for people out there who who uh, who follow what the, what this is, and uh, modulating frequency of 500 hertz and 15 hertz, um, and what the 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 reason uh, for for that is is uh, there's a few mechanisms of action. Um, uh, one is uh, to it, it, it train the brain, and alternating current can does this quite successfully to entrain a brainwave state, uh, which which means. Um, if you've heard of the alpha wave, uh, alpha brain state, that's a, a meditative uh, brain state. You can you can in self induce an alpha state by doing deep breathing and, and meditation. Um, but what this device will do is is actually uh, do that for you, and also have a, a quite a long duration of effect. Um, and so that's one mechanism, and that's actually what uh, what we suspect helps people to get to sleep um, faster. Is so if they're in a you know, a kind of a state of, of high vigilance. Uh, you know, we, we see, we see this a lot with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder patients who are, uh, you know, in a state of, of high anxiety and then they put the device on and almost immediately they'll want to go to sleep. That's not an uncommon reaction. Um, in terms of helping people stay asleep, which is the other side of insomnia, um, so that you don't wake up at three in the morning and can't go back to sleep. Uh, there are neurochemical, uh, neurotransmitter production that we've tracked in, in uh, some published studies, uh, increases in serotonin, melatonin, uh, uh, decreases in cortisol, the stress hormone. And then there's the, the third mechanism that we're, um, and there, there may be more than three, but the, the third mechanism that we, that there's some research on is modulation of the default mode network, which is the, the center region of the brain, which, which will provide kind of, which will regulate the, uh, parasympathetic uh, nervous system, and so if you can kind of calm people down that way by 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 you know uh, by modulating uh, that brain region, and that's why we have the electrodes that are placed uh, on either side of the head. It's the thinnest part of the skull, and it's it they're positioned you know right over the the center brain um, structures, and um, and so we've you know this device was originally grandfathered in to regulation in the 70s not our device but this category of device because they're actually making crude versions of these uh you know for decades um and you know uh, a lot of them came out of uh of russia at the time um and they're known as electro sleep and uh and so you know, they've, they've become more uh, fine tuned and, and, and easier to use. They used to be kind of like tabletop devices. And, and we've been able to obviously with the advances in, in, in uh, PCB and board manufacturing and other things, we've been able to, to shrink that down. And uh, so a patient will wear the electrodes for 20 minutes before going to bed. And, um, and, you know, you kind of want to use it as a, as a ritual uh, every night. Um, and, 
Uh, you just wear it for the 20 minutes. Um, some people will fall asleep with them on, uh, but but uh, but that's not that's not intended. We usually we, we want to really try and take it off so you don't have the wires on you. There there are some wires that lead up there. Um, you know, you leave it by the nightstand and and uh, and and hopefully you know you'll, you'll get to sleep uh, faster and, and stay asleep longer. Um, so we're we're doing uh, we we have. Up to up to up to this year, there were really just small studies uh, that were performed uh, with sleep with insomnia. Uh, but this year, we we had um, we launched a, a fairly large insomnia study, uh, to almost 200 subjects, 198 subjects. Um, started this fall. Uh, we we closed enrollment uh, a few weeks ago, and or I guess three weeks ago, and uh, we're going to have. Uh, the, the first four weeks of the data uh, next week, I, th I think it's going to be uh, processed. And then uh, the trial was eight weeks in length. And so we're submitting the first four weeks to FDA uh, by March 19th uh, for FDA approval for insomnia. And then we're going to be submitting weeks five through eight uh, after as an amendment to the application. And so, you know, this will be the, if we get a positive outcome, um, which would really be, you know, an increase in sleep time, is what we're looking at. It's uh, these had to be home-based studies because of the pandemic, so you can't go into a sleep lab. Most you know sleep studies are done at a at a sleep lab, but they're, they're all closed uh, during the pandemic. So we did home-based studies. We had to, and um, and so you can't do polysomnography, which is kind of considered the gold standard. Um, but you can use uh, Fitbits, and Fitbits actually have become very very good over the years. Um, uh, they're actually shown to be better than actigraphs in terms of a accuracy and very close to, to, to polysomnography. So, um, uh, so our hope is that we'll see uh, increases in total sleep time and, uh, and also a reduction on what's called the ISI, which is the insomnia uh, score. We, we were only admitting patients who um, had, had severe insomnia. So, so yeah, so we, we were able to, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to, be submitting these uh, this uh, insomnia trial to the FDA for approval on March nineteenth, and it will take about a year. They they expect um, for them to fully review, uh, hopefully less, um, and uh, and then with with full FDA approval, if if we're if we're to get it, uh, this will be the only uh, wearable. Uh, that's a, a something that you would only use for a short time that's been FDA approved. There's one other medical device called Cereve that had uh, was, was the first device to get FDA approval for uh, treating uh, sleep latency, which is um, trying to get to sleep faster. Um, but that is a wear all night device that goes on the forehead and cools the frontal cortex. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a cooling device that literally cools the front of your brain. Um, and, uh, so this is a much easier device than that. You just wear it for 20 minutes before bed. So, um, you know, we, we did a, a study, uh, this past, this past year, um, at Baylor, uh, I shouldn't say we did it. It, it was performed at Baylor using our device. Uh, we actually didn't fund it. It was funded uh, completely by Baylor and, uh, with the principal investigator, Mark Powers, who is the director of trauma research at, at Baylor in Austin. And uh, he performed this study with 42 active duty police officers from the Garland Police Department, which is a, a, a section of Dallas. And it was, uh, I believe, mostly, if not entirely, a night shift. Uh, uh, so, you know, officers who were working at night and sleeping during the day and had terrible sleep. Um, and so, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be... Uh, uh, working on publishing that data. Um, and I believe that there was a, 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 a significant, a clinically significant outcome on total sleep time. So the increasing uh, sleep by, by 20 minutes is kind of the gold standard. That's what um, uh, a lot of the drugs that you're familiar with Ambien and so forth um, when, when they went through approval process. Uh, so, you know, if we can deliver something similar uh, in terms of increasing total sleep time, but without medication, it's obviously a huge innovation. Um, and, and so we're, we're hoping that that occurs. So we're also, we also did two trials, uh, two other trials this year during a pandemic, which was a depression trial and an anxiety trial. Um, and so our device, we're actually shooting for approval for all three. Uh, that would be the best case scenario. Um, 
again, the, these were these were tough to to run during a pandemic in terms of the the anxiety trial. Uh, just a lot. There's high levels of anxiety of patients who were applying. Um, I think half the patients were severe, and um, and I think there was a lot of stresses that were occurring. These are home based trials, so you can imagine trying to perform in a clinical or try to to carry out the duties of a clinical trials as, as a subject when you have kids at home and, mm-hmm. and maybe you're unemployed and it, it's, it's tough. So, you know, we did, we didn't have hundred percent compliance with the subjects, but we did have uh, 307 subjects enrolled. So again, for a device trial, that's large uh, for, for a drug trial, that's not large, but for a device trial, that, that that's, that's pretty large. And, um, and these trials don't have to have, you know, thousands of patients because we're not, what the FDA does recognize is that these devices are safe. And uh, there's only about a 1% side effect rate. Um, and that is headache, dizziness, sometimes skin irritation under the electrode sites, all very rare that that happens and, and all very temporary. These are, these are side effects that, you know, um, that you can even tolerate and still use the device versus the side effects of medication, which can be uh, anything from, uh, you know, suicidal ideation to, uh, you know, real gastro problems and weight gain and so forth. So, and in the case of Ambien, you know, the sleepwalking is, is, is pretty well known. So, um, so you're avoiding all that by using our device. And I think, you know, we're also, we make it affordable out of pocket so that you don't have to go and, and, um, and, and really, you know, it, for people who are concerned about having mental health related treatments on their, on their record. So, so to speak, their insurance record, um, that's not something you have to, to, to go through to get our device. So our device retails right now for $500 out of pocket. We have a payment plan um, and we have a, a 30 day full refund, free return policy, just like you would for something like an Amazon. Um, and so we get about 15% of them back, uh, which is, which is excellent, right? I mean, that's 85% of the people they're paying out of pocket. They decide to keep their device. So that, that's a good sign too, uh, that what we're doing is, is really helping people. And then we get all of these, you know, all of these uh, testimonials, we get emails, we got emails, hundreds of emails this year, this past year of people using the device during lockdown. And, you know, some of them are very, very moving. You know, there was a member one from a trauma, a, a trauma nurse, uh, and she was really relying on this device just to kind of stay sane during during her her work. Um, her, you know, very very intense. Um, so, you know, it's been it's been rewarding. You know, um, professionally to to be doing this during the pandemic, and um, and I think the the effects of the pandemic are gonna are gonna the mental health effects are are gonna be with us for a while, um, and you know, long after you know. Uh, someone gets vaccinated, they, they, they can still have, uh, you know, the, these heightened levels of, of anxiety, depression, and, and insomnia. So um, we're, we're uh, you know, we're looking forward to be able to, to treat more people. You answered pretty much all my questions with that. <laughs> but I want to I go a little bit deeper into some of them. So I mentioned to you when we first were talking that my husband's a volunteer for the Maricopa Sheriff sheriff's office here in phoenix and he's a commander for one of the volunteer units and i hear stories about these police officers and what they're going through especially during the pandemic it's it's so stressful for them and my husband's lived in new jersey worked in new york city so he's used to the high stress high bustle that you have where you live but uh, i actually saw you doing something on a youtube talk you did uh, for brainstorm health in 2019 where you combined your technology with virtual reality to treat people with anxiety depression insomnia can you explain how your technology work would work with virtual reality for people in policing or high stress jobs absolutely great question and thanks for bringing that up so what what i failed to mention is that the the so the studies that we that i was just talking about the three large ones that we're doing simultaneously those were just done with our device standalone. There's not no other treatment, uh, no cognitive behavioral therapy. We don't even have an app in their current. So you're not, there's no interaction with an app. It's just the simulation. Now, the, the, that 42 subject study that we did at Baylor um, with police officers, that did have virtual reality. And that was a VR headset uh, was used 
and our electrodes were then slid under the strap of the VR headset in the morning. And so the officers would use uh, our device while engaging in about a 20 minute um, uh, VR experience. And what we chose for that is a, a game called Land's End, uh, which is made by a company called Us2, uh, U-S-T-W-O. And they are well known in the gaming community for having uh, created the game called Monument Valley, which was a huge, huge success. Beautiful game, kind of like a, a, an Escher drawing come to life. Um, so they created this VR game and I, I called Land's End. And when I, Land's End is, is this, ex, you're kind of exploring, there's a gaming element to it, but you're in a very peaceful, beautiful kind of alien landscape, but not scary or dystopian. It's, 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 there's beaches and canyons and, and the gaming element is involved kind of moving with your eyes. So there's, there's eye tracking. So you can actually stack boulders in these configurations and then that'll open a door and then you go through the door and you're on a beach and you can hear the waves and it's, it's a very relaxing, but still mindful in terms of your, you're still focusing on, on, on the gaming element, it, it, but it's, uh, but it's not like a violent uh, adrenaline game. You're, you're, it's more really meditative and, um, and, and, and the officers loved it. Uh, so, so they reported really enjoying that. And then in the evening, they wouldn't use the VR. They would just use our device, or not the evening, at the end of their shift uh, when they're going to bed, which I think for, for many of them was actually, um, you know, the, the daylight was either coming or had had, had, had gotten there. Um, they just use the device because you don't want to have a lot of optic stimulation when you're trying to get to sleep. Uh, you mm -hmm. probably heard that. You don't want to have uh, a lot of bright light and uh, that's going to trigger your, your, um, it's, you know, your, your circadian cycles and your, your body you really want to be in a dark room when, when you're trying to get to sleep. So you don't use the VR at night. Um, but that is something that uh, now it's difficult in that trial. It was just a pilot study to really know how much of the, say, stress release, re relief uh, in the morning was achieved by the VR versus the ver versus the um, device. Now, we could do that if we structured a study that had different arms. So you had you know, one subject that was just using our device, one subject that was just using VR, and then another subject arm that was using the combination. We didn't do that. We just, this was more of a proof of concept to see if this worked as a, as a therapy in general and if people liked it. And if you're able to tailor uh, our device, is that it, it is kind of agnostic. That's why we didn't, we want, we want to do these three future. Um, it's the present, you know, but it's, I think the future, will, you'll see more combinations of brain stimulation with, um, with interactive games and, and digital health uh, platforms. So, you know, I'm, I'm, that's a very exciting part of, of where this is headed. So this is fascinating because these are all alternatives to, you know, perhaps someone's stressed out and they come home from work and they have a drink that we know damages the brain and results. So these are incredible for being alternatives that are healthy, brain healthy. And uh, that's correct. It, so there's, there are, there are cognitive benefits that have been documented from, from alternating current, uh, as well as, as TDCS direct current, um, uh, you know, improvements in focus and concentration. Um, and so there is a brain health, you're actually helping the brain. It's, it's not something that's in any way destructive. Um, and that's reflected in the extremely low side effect rate, you know, yeah, definitely. So for someone who's gone through a brain scan at Dr. Amon's clinics, my brain showed a little bit sleep deprived. So I'm just kind of curious of uh, wearing this device for myself to and my husband to see if we could improve our brain health. Because, you know, when you, you get a result, then you get told, well, you know, here's some things that you could do. But there's not really any strategies for improving sleep other than just try to make sure you get your seven and a half to eight hours sleep. Right. So this is right. The right. That, that I've not heard yet, which we've been looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think, um, you know, that's uh, treated now about 70,000 patients uh, now. So, you know, because we've been FDA cleared this whole time uh, through what's called the substantial equivalent pathway, which is a technical regulatory term, but devices are a bit different device to the market as long as it's low risk. Have, and, and then you are, we got a approval 
pathway later after, after the device was on the market. Um, and, uh, and so, yes, there, there are, there's a real lack of, of, of treatment options for sleep. Um, but the, the good thing is that, you know, Fitbits are so common and a- Apple watches and so forth that, you know, you really can run your own clinical trial. I mean, you, you know, personal clinical trial and you can, you can, you can see, you know, you put the device on, you use it every night for a week and, or two weeks and, 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 and see how your, your sleep is improved and your, in your wearable uh, sleep tracking data. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's great that, that people can do that. Um, it's, it's a little obvious, you know, with, with mood, you, you can track that as well. I mean, we, we're going to be in the version two device that's going to have an app, you know, we are going to be, uh, taking, be able to, for patients, if they opt in, uh, they can take self-assessment, uh, questionnaires, uh, on, on mood and, um, and they can also track their, their, their symptoms from, in terms of depression and anxiety. Um, so, you know, th- that's the beauty of, of, of digital health is that there's, there's a lot of data that can be captured, but there is a lack of actual interventions out there, especially, I mean, we take away drugs and you take away, a, a, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. There's really not, there's really not very much out there. Um, so, uh, there, there's a great need and I, you know, um, you know, we're, we think that, you know, we're, in, we're in a good position to, uh, to help a lot more patients than, than we have so far. Well, this is exciting. I, my mind is going a million miles a minute for this. <laughs> so let, let's go to the fact we know anxiety and depression are at all time highs these days with the pandemic. How does the device help your body to release dopamine, serotonin and fall into that state? What's exactly happening when you're wearing it? So, you know, not, not to be evasive, but, uh, you know, there's actually not, what we do know is that the serotonin is increases because you, you can, you can test for that. Um, uh, you can, you can do biomarker studies and, and test for that. And we've done that. The exact way how that happens, we, we still won't really know. I mean, there, there are some theories around that, which are very technical, um, but it's not clearly understood what, how that's, how that's occurring. And there's, that is a place where we need, we need to do more research. Um, we can, you know, drug companies, the, when, when they released these antidepressants, they didn't really know exactly uh, how uh, in patients where, where depression was, um, you know, reduced or, or put into remission, exactly how the, the drug does that. On some level, you know how to increase serotonin in terms of with a drug, you you can inhibit the receptors. So, so serotonin reuptake inhibitors, you know, can increase the amount of serotonin by in- inhibiting receptors. But you know, aside from that, what what is exactly the relationship between that occurring and a feeling is sad? That's that it, it, through the drug is is a little bit you know harder to to discern. So, you know, we, we need to do some more research on on that. Um, the good news is that we the research has been done. Uh, we do know that there are increases in, in these neurotransmitters. We know that brain waves can be entrained by alternating current, and that you know we're seeing in an fMRI work that uh, that very deep brain structures like the amygdala are are actually being modulated uh, with 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 our device. So uh, so we're, we're, that's going to be the next phase. You know the studies we just did are really tracking symptoms and and then we're going to do some more work on uh mechanism of action and and some more brain imagery uh in the style of of dr amen and and really looking at you know pre during and post what what's going on um and 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 you know with with uh, fmri and, and other methods and and get a better sense of that so you know hopefully if you ask me that question in a year i'll have i'll have i'll have better answers well, why I asked it was because after doing a brain scan, I know, and, and using some self-awareness, I know that I personally need different ways to increase dopamine and I've always used exercise. Yep. So, you know, and, and it's just been my go-to. I know yep. when I feel, I feel better when I exercise, but that's not going to be something I'm going to be, be able to do long-term. The amount of exercise I get in a day is you know, I'm going to be like 60, 70, 80. I can't go hike up a mountain one day, or even in the pandemic, if they closed the mountain, I, w- I would be out of luck with my mental health. Right. So I right. 
school for people that know that they need to do certain things and they can't. Now there's this device that could increase my dopamine. That's where I was going with that question. I was just kind of curious for other solutions to exercise. Not that I would ever cut it out, but just thinking about it, you know, ways to, for self-care. Yeah. So we have increases in endorphins um, and uh, in those same biomarker studies. Um, and, you know, you raise a good point. I mean, wh whether there's lack of access to working out or whether, you you know, someone is disabled and they, they, they can't um, elderly, you know, I think that there's a, there's a lot of use cases, right. Where, where you want to try and bring something uh, to the patient. So I, I think, um, you know, we were able to FedEx these to people's doors. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to go to a, a, you know, a pharmacy, this comes right to your door. Um, and so, and so, yeah, it, it's, it, it will be something. I mean, we, I think the, the oldest subject in their studies was 78, um, but we definitely have uh, patients in their eighties and nineties who, who, who purchase these devices. And, and I think that's probably a good reason why, you know, that you just touched on is, be, you know, the ability to kind of get that uh, self-care uh, through exercise, you know, diminishes and, and you want to have some other ways to do it. You know, diet obviously is, is, is very important um, and, and rest, you right. I mean, sleep and diet, uh, will go a long way too. So those are things that, um, you know, as you get older that, that, uh, you know, sometimes sleep, sleep will go down a bit. Um, but I think, you know, the food part is, is often overlooked and, and, uh, and so that, that that's an important piece of it as well, I think. Definitely. And then I watched your interview with Luke's story where you give an incredible overview of the hurdles that you had to overcome with like those blockbuster antidepressants like Prozac. And yeah. could you just talk a little bit about why these antidepressants are so bad for our bodies versus your device? Well, there's, there, there's, there's a number of reasons. I mean, I think one in terms of the serotonin reuptake inhibitors that we were just talking about, um, you know, your brain is not the only place that, that, uh, produces serotonin. Uh, it, you know, your, your, your gastro tract actually is a majority of your, your body's serotonin production. So, um, so when you're taking a drug that, that interferes with normal serotonin, um, uh, kind of, you know, production and, and, uh, reception, um, it's, it's not surprising that, that there are so many, uh, gastro related side effects. Um, you know, I used to take antidepressant in my twenties and, and, and I gained a lot of weight because I was always hungry and I never, I never felt full no matter how, how much I ate. Um, you know, you have people out there like Kanye West who, who have stopped taking medication, uh, because they just, you know, they've, they've had it with, 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 with these kinds of, uh, uh, side effects. So, um, you know, I think if you think of it, it's just not an efficient way, right, to, to get something um, into your brain by swallowing it, right? right. Um, and and so what's nice about a brain simulation wearable is you bypass that whole system. You don't need the digestive system, um, and you can deliver treatment pretty much directly. We're not not quite as directly as what you know Elon Musk is now developing with. Uh, you know, his implanted brain simulation, and there are implantable uh, brain simulators that you can get for, uh, you know, uh, you know, for, for motor diseases, and and uh, they're called deep brain stimulators. Um, that's about as direct as you get. But we're we're the next best thing, and obviously, you know, there are downsides to having surgery. So, um, uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of what Musk is doing with 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 his. Uh, with his brain simulation company, but it is a surgical solution. And I think what, what Fisher Wallace is really going to, you know, what, what our focus is, uh, is non-surgical and, and having something that, um, you know, is going to be very, and the price will come down over time and, and, you know, his volume goes up and, and I think, you know, th this could be something that, uh, you know, we may be able to get down to say a couple hundred bucks, um, and, or, and maybe have it on a subscription basis. So, you know, it's kind of like having, you know, a whoop or, or something like that. Um, so, uh, so that's, you know, I think, um, with, with drugs, uh, you know, I don't know enough about 
why Ambien causes the sleepwalking. Uh, uh, I don't know if, if the drug companies know how, exactly how that happens either, but, um, but I mean, any, I think at this point in time, when we started, when I was talking to Luke about that, I mean, when, when the inventors of our device, uh, they, they were met with incredible opposition, you know, in terms of they were trying to come to market at the heyday of, of, of these blockbuster drugs and I think when Chip and I, my partner, got involved, we were – our timing was better because, you know, when we started working together in 2009, you know, at that point, patients and doctors were very, very familiar with with the downsides of drug therapy. Um, you know, we're not anti-drug. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there are lots of patients who are helped by drugs. You know, I mean, if you look at um, remission rates, they're not much better than placebo if you look at the drug studies, but, you know, the drug studies are also, they're very, they're very, uh, uh, they're not perfect. They're not real world. Um, they don't show a real world picture of a patient. Just as I was saying, how real world is it to have insomnia patients that don't have anxiety or depression? You know, most of our patients are going to have two or, or three of these symptoms. Uh, and you can't do studies like that because then it's hard to, to say, well, you know, is this really treating insomnia or is it, is it is, you know, or will it work with patients that don't have anxiety? So they want the FDA likes to see kind of these pure patient symptom profiles. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the effectiveness of drugs may be a little bit better than, than what the, the studies show, which is, which is very, very minimal uh, difference between remission rates and, and placebo uh, effect. Um, uh, but there, there's a lot of people that are helped by them. And, and, you know, we have psychiatrists uh, who's, who, who have patients who are helped on drugs and still prescribe our device because they want to lower the dosage. So if you're, if you're, if you're taking kind of highest doses of, of antidepressant and it's working for you, but you get all these side effects from the high dose, what uh, psychiatrists are using our device for is to keep the patient on the drug but to be able to lower it down to say the low, the medium or lowest dose of the drug in combination with the device. And that by doing that, you're reducing the side effect uh, of, of the drug because you're lowering the dosage. And there are a lot of patients uh, that are able to get off drugs completely, but, 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 you know, but it's success if you can just lower the dosage and have less side effects. So, so there are combinational uses as there are with VR, with, with drug therapy, for sure. It's, that's, we have a lot of psychiatrists that use our device in combination with medication. And the more that comfortable they are using it that way, the more that they're, they approach their practice differently, right? Because you can, you can um, hopefully get an effect either with the device by itself or in combination with a lower dose of, of an antidepressant, whereas before you may have had to use the higher highest dose and the patient was then faced with the question of, well, I am feeling better emotionally, but I'm, I have all these terrible side effects I'm dealing with. So um, it's a balance. And it, it, you know, I think that that's another way this device can help is, is people who are actually getting some benefit from drug therapy. Got it. That does help explain it for me. And when we first connected on LinkedIn, I always have a look and see, you know, who do we have in common just to see who might know uh -huh. that I know. And, and we had someone in common, we have Anish Chowdhury. And I had him on the podcast the for January, we actually talked New Year's Eve, he focuses on addiction prevention. And so I had to wonder, could a wearable device help improve someone's mood and help them to stay sober if they're struggling with addiction? Do you deal with, with yes. that? We talked a little bit about virtual yeah. reality and choosing yes. to do that. But, but like, I was wondering why he would be so interested in your device with his background. Yeah, so we have um, a board member of our of Fisher Wallace, uh, adv a medical advisory board member, um, uh, Mitch Rosenthal, Dr. Rosenthal, who, who, uh, was founder of Phoenix house, which is a, a big drug and alcohol rehab center. And, uh, we actually, uh, participated in a study at Phoenix house with, uh, almost 400 patients, um, where a hundred of them, this is all, so Phoenix house is a, at least the, the one that we we're at, which, which was in New York. Um, they're all over the uh, over the country, but um, it's a residential treatment. So these are people who 
had just stopped using either alcohol, cocaine, uh, uh, opioids, and had come into this residential treatment center um, for, I think it was up to 180 days. And uh, I know the study went for 180 days. I, I'm not, some of these people may, may be there even longer. Um, and what they found is the patients who had the regular standard of care at Phoenix house versus, you know, they had a high dropout rate. So th that was a problem they were trying to solve. It's like, you know, we're getting these people in who really need help, but they're dropping out, uh, you know, at the 90 day point at the 180 day point in fairly large numbers. Um, I think they had about half of, of their, of their patients were dropping out uh, uh, b b before the full term. And so they had a hundred of their, of their patients use our device while they're in rehab. And the patients that did use our device actually stayed in rehab at a 50% higher rate wow. than the patients who didn't use the, our device and had, and had the rehab. So, uh, and these patients reported, as you'd expect with our device, uh, you know, reduced anxiety, better sleep. And so, you know, when you're in the early abstinence phase of, 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 of recovery of rehab, uh, you know, that's a time where you can have a lot of trouble sleeping mm -hmm. and obviously you're used to using drugs often to reduce anxiety or because you have anxiety, that's why you're using the drugs. So, um, so yeah, it's been shown to, to be uh, an effective tool in rehab and, you know, you don't have to be in formal rehab, right. To benefit from that. There's a lot of people, obviously drinking has also gone up during the pandemic. And I think, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're like, you know, I'd like to reduce or, or maybe take a, have a dry month. Mm -hmm. um, then this device can, can possibly help, help you do that because it, it can, it can be something that, that helps uh, kind of take you down a, um, a couple of gears. Uh, and so you, you may be able to use this device instead of uh, having a drink. Um, uh, and so, you know, and, and you can use the device, you know, twice a day is what we recommend for uh, anxiety and depression morning, evening, but you can use it during the day as well um, or, or in alternative. So, uh, so I think, you know, there, there's, a, I mean, I, I, I know there's a lot of people that uh, that want to try and, 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 and reduce or, or eliminate drinking. And so this, um, this is one thing that could help. Uh, smoking is something that we'd like to do a study on uh, eventually uh, because of, um, you know, of, of the, of the neurotransmitters uh, that can, that can help re reduce craving and, and so forth. Um, so, so that's something we, we need to do some research on. Uh, but I would, I would recommend it anyway, because, you know, again, a lot of people are smoking, uh, as a way to, you know, kind of manage anxiety and, um, you know, and obviously the nicotine can actually help hurt your sleep. Um, but, uh, I, you know, we, we recommend it in general for anyone that's, that's, uh, you know, dealing with, with substance withdrawal or, or, or abstinence uh, issues, um, to, to, to try the device, to manage their, their sleep and, and their mood, you know. Incredible. I love these brain healthy solutions. So what's your 10 year vision for where you'd like to see these devices going? I know you're waiting on your FDA approval. That's obviously the start of your vision, but where do you see this going in the next 10 years? So I think in 10 years, uh, well, as, as the years go on, we're going to have, um, you know, more advanced versions of our device coming out. So I think we'll, we'll probably, we may always have the current device, um, but th there's, there's something called closed loop stimulation, which is very interesting uh, in which you're not just delivering a, a fixed output. So where our device delivers a fixed output, it works for, you know, most, most of our patients, but it, there are uh, sensor arrays that you can have on your head Um you don't necessarily need that many sensors to be able to actually monitor brain activity during a st brain simulation. So um, there are brain simulation products out there that can actually respond to, uh, to brain, um, uh, to brain activity and then modulate the, the, what this, the stimulation accordingly. Now there's a couple of, uh, gaps there though, right now with, with that is a, um, the, 
any kind of sensors that are low cost enough and kind of convenient enough to have on your head are not great right now with fidelity in terms of actually seeing incredible detail. Now you can get like, you can get incredible detail in fMRI, but you can't, you can't put an effort, you know, can't, can't carry around one of those machines. So, so to have that level of, of fidelity is there's still some time for that. Uh, there are sensors that, that can do it. They're just very expensive. So, but that's all those costs are coming down. Um, and then the other thing is, even if you can see what's going on in the brain, you know, how do you know really what to fix now? So what, what you don't necessarily need to know going into it. If you have enough patients using a closed loop system, if you have tens of thousands of patients and you're, you're collecting and aggregating all of that data on brainwave, brainwave activity and, and then being able to see uh, what works and what doesn't on a, with, with a, enough size, enough statistical scale, uh, then you can build a smarter and smarter device. And so I do think that that is going to be the future and, and Fisher Wallace will be deeply involved in that. Um, you know, that we may, we may acquire a company that does that, um, and, 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 you know, acquire technology that does that. Um, there are devices out there uh, that have what I would call crude form of, of closed loop sim, uh, uh, stimulations where they have those cheap sensors, not great fidelity, but, you know, they're, they're, they are doing it. Um, I just don't think there's anything out there that's going to compete with our effectiveness. That's a closed loop d- device at this point, but that's going to definitely change as, as years go on. So, uh, you know, I would, I would say in, in, in three or four years from now, we may have a, a, a closed loop product in our portfolio. Um, maybe even sooner than that depends on how all this other technology I was talking about can go. Um, and, and then in 10 years, you know, I think, the 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 fidelity and the cost the fidelity would be very high of those sensors the cost will be very low and we'll have enough data from uh, from you know all the patients using it to to have very very smart uh brain stimulation on a massive scale and that you know um hopefully that'll be a faster timeline than than uh, uh than i described but um i think for the next few years uh you know, we're going to have hopefully one of the only FDA approved devices out there. And, and uh, even though it's a fixed output device and it's not using those sensors, there's benefits to that, right? It's, it's very inexpensive to produce. Um, those costs will come down and uh, uh, w- simply with scale, we don't need really any more technological innovation to bring those costs down. And, um, and, and, you know, and you can use them, as I said, in combination with other things. And it's, you know, I think that'll kind of be like, we want it to kind of be like the Advil, right? Kind of the, 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 the cheap, easy, effective version. You don't have to put, you don't have to have any kind of sensor array um, on your head for it to work. You know, you can just slide it on, slide it off. Um, but we do have a headband. So I, I'm excited to actually, you know, and I, I'm already investigating embedding some some sensors in the headband um even if there's some low cost ones uh you know that will help us for instance know or be able to tell the the subject are they in an alpha wave brain state uh kind of similar to you've probably heard of the muse device and other ones that are kind of using eeg sensors you can tell what brain wave those are those are widely available and inexpensive um in terms of actually seeing tiny structures with inside the brain, the, those sensors are going to be more, I think a little down the road uh, before you see those highly, highly commercialized. Well, this has just opened up my mind to so many different possibilities for myself and for our listeners who are brain health conscious. And, you know, a lot of us are tied to our watches and our devices and measuring things, looking to improve. I saw, or did I hear somewhere you mentioned that your de- your device can improve heart rate variability? Is that one of the things that it improves with, with sleep also? Yeah, that's not a claim that, that we make, but we did do a, a small study, uh, very small, with I think 10 subjects where we were looking at heart rate variability and it was in um, it was in menopause, and so uh, the, and we did see that the uh, that the device was able to to help um, 
down regulate uh, that um, in the subject so so that is something that we've we've seen um and uh uh yeah and and that that is something which is actually pretty easy to track you know with a risk-based wearable so um you know again if you if you're using this at you know if you if you get one of these devices um you can use the wearable to track your sleep you can use the wearable to to look at your heart rate uh variability data and um and you know these 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 wearables uh and and, and apps are are you know getting better and better every year um so all that kind of data is something that on a patient by patient basic uh, basis uh, can be can be monitored that's fascinating i'm just so intrigued and interested to learn more here so i just want to thank you so much kelly for taking the time to meet with me and for opening up my mind for anyone who wants to learn more about your devices, you can go to fisherwallace.com. There's a ton of videos on there. There's actually, I think, it, is it you and the audience of the doctors? Or, or you were on stage with that? Were you one of the people I couldn't tell? No, there was a patient that was invited to that. Oh. Uh, and so the, the doctors, the producers decided to do a, a, a segment on on our device. And so they, they found a patient and brought the patient into the audience. and and talk to her so that w and then and then had a uh you know a little segment about her cool. using it. so that was a big deal for us obviously uh that came out a few years ago and and was you know much needed in terms of our own building awareness efforts um and so yeah the doctors featured us we were uh named one of four technologies innovating mental health by forbes magazine uh, the Wall Street Journal did a, a piece on us um, and interviewed a psychiatrist at Columbia, uh, Dr. Richard Brown, um, who told them that, you know, he's had hundreds of patients uh, using the device in his practice and that he had, you know, 70, 75 percent uh, success rate uh, treating, uh, you know, depression, anxiety, insomnia. Um, so, yeah, we've been lucky to get some good press. So that That is probably the, you know, the best uh, kind of uh, TV press, we, we did, we were featured in a documentary in Europe uh, a few months ago, and I think it's coming to the US pretty soon. It's called Sleep at Any Cost. Uh, and if you go to our website now, you'll see that video. It's it's the first video I think that's, that's playing on our homepage. Um, and there's actually some footage of our factory and my partner Chip w walking around with uh, the factory and, and being interviewed. And then they profile a patient um, who used it uh, for, for sleep and anxiety, uh, and, and all, all three, she, she had a, a depression, anxiety, insomnia, and, um, you know, had a really life-changing experience. It's a pretty powerful, uh, segment. I, hopefully that's going to come out in, in the U S as a, a, on Netflix or something. So, um, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Wonderful. And if anyone wants to reach you is the best way through LinkedIn, just search for Kelly Roman or what, is there another, Way to reach. Yeah, so that's one way. And then you can also, if you go to Fisher Wallace, it's F I S H E R Wallace. Um, and, and you can email info, I N F I N F O info at Fisher Wallace. And that will get to me. I mean, if you, if you, if you address something for me, um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it definitely gets passed on. Um, and we have, you know, live, uh, customer support, um, seven days a week, uh, from morning till midnight. So, uh, you can always ask someone there, tell them you want to get a hold of me and, and they'll, they'll text me or find me. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty easy to get hold of. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you so much. I've learned so much from you and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Really enjoy this. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Stay tuned, we'll be doing a follow-up to this episode after I have tested out the Fisher-Wallace sleep device.